Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cupid. I am your host, Marla Martinson, and today I am with Aurora Juliana Ariel. Hello. <laughs> Aloha. So whether Aloha. it is whether it's pioneering work in the psyche, heading her global healing ministry, bringing out her landmark discoveries in global conferences, writing books, leading the quest and other trainings, this is a busy woman. So <laughs> <laughs> and you're a mystic and a producer and, and you, you're a musician. I mean, are you a Gemini like me? It seems like you do everything under the sun. I do everything under the sun by God's grace. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So um, we've got a lot of things to delve into today, uh, including how to stay young, how to you know actually reverse the aging process, uh, some healing techniques. But first, I'd love to hear some of your story because you were telling me earlier that you became awakened at an early age. And I love to find out because I'm on my path as, as a lot of my viewers and we're working on maybe opening the third eye or kind of peeking into other dimensions or connecting. And some, for some of us, it's a challenge. And then other people, that it just happened at a young age. So how did it happen for you? Well, I was called into the inner world pretty young and unexpectedly. And so I grew up in Malibu in California and had a very idyllic life and riding my horse in the mountains and along the beach. And, you know, it was just a um, very simple life. And I wasn't aware of anything spiritual or any that big happening on the planet yet. And I started having divine visitations, I started awakening, I started remembering, and by the time I was 16, I knew I was a vessel of healing and light. I didn't really know what that would look like. I just knew that my path was a mission, and I was awakened to a planetary conscience that young. So I had visions, and those visions showed me these two potentials for humanity. One, the dire potentials we've all heard about, and another amazing, glorious future that opened up to my sight. And I was like, yes, I want to align with that. I, I would like to do my part. And I knew, somehow I knew that how to do it all was just to follow my inner divine self unfailingly. And I have, and it's led to all of this service and all that's happening today. And so were you an only child or did you have siblings? Uh, I was the eldest of three. And what about your siblings? Did they have any kind of awakenings or visions or were you the only one? Um, my next sister, uh, she went into a more spiritually oriented life eventually. Mm -hmm. And so when you say visions, is this in a meditation or is it just sitting there and they appear in front of you with your eyes open or is it third eye? What, how would you explain, you know, describe it? Well, I would say a lot of different ways they came. I've had an angelic visitation when I was on a mountaintop living on a ridge for the summer in Silverton, Colorado. I was 18 and I was shown the future uh, by this beautiful angelic being, so my first encounter with an angel. And he showed me the dire potentials before humanity and what was really going on on the planet, which Years later, I read about as I read Edgar Casey and some of these other seers about this time, and there it was pretty exacting. But then he also said that there was another potential, and that it was really important to put light on these conditions, and that we would come to change them. And so that became a mission, that became a calling of how can I support the positive outcome and humanity moving into more of an age of enlightenment and freedom and peace. Yes, because now things are really stirred up. I mean, there's a lot of it's seemingly evil in the world with between terrorists and the way just crime and, and destruction of the, the na of nature in general. And did they show this to you and two possible outcomes? Is that kind of what happened? Yeah, I, I was able to see two roads humanity could take, and that was very much our responsibility, which way it would go, and that we could have total cataclysm and chaos and, and really lose a good part of what we had gained, like in other eras when there were big cataclysms. Mm -hmm. And so that was really compelling, yet I never bought into it because I saw I was here, and many of us were here to undo that 
to really move humanity into a new future and by healing ourselves and going through what I would call now a transfiguration and coming into our full authentic selves and being vessels of all the wondrous things that want to come forward for humanity. And, you know, so as I said, different visions would come in in quiet moments and different remembrances. And one was under a hypnosis when I was 19 and I actually just jumped on my own right before this life and it was exciting because I saw all of us, so many of us, were excited to come to Earth in this time and that this time we're going to all come together and we would be born all over the planet in every nation, every background and we were getting prepared in what looked like a soul school and it had tall ceilings, very temple-like and we were watching on a big screen um, all of these things that were bringing up heartfelt emotions, compassion, caring, loving, and this was acclimating us to Earth. And it was, it was also daunting because we knew we were coming into a serious time. The planet was fast hurtling to untold disasters, and the world had seen things like that before, and it had undone really, really great civilizations. So we knew that finally when we would find each other, we would move out of a sense of aloneness and, oh my God, where am I? And, you know, I've just been transported to a weird planet, an archaic planet. And, and that once we started finding out that there were so many of us and we started connecting, that would be our saving grace. We would have peace. We would know we're all here together. We're all doing it together. And every year we would be ascending. So I didn't even know what that word meant. Mm -hmm. And we would be ascending into higher and higher states of our true authentic selves. And we would be doing it all together. And I have witnessed it. Mm -hmm. And because I've witnessed it and I've witnessed the amazing positive things happening, all of the the beautiful renaissance of, that's flooding our world with beautiful products and services and new new things for humanity, I keep my finger on the pulse of that and I'm aware of the other, but I don't get so riveted on it. And so I've written about it, I bring forth uh, information to help people be inspired and have hope for our future. And also I love to help people unravel and undo the human programming they took on so they can actualize their greater potential and do their part. That's fantastic. Yes, I've never uh, seen so many healers at one time, and I'm a Reiki and crystal healer and uh, keep getting more certifications. It's just like so, it brings me so much joy, and because of that, I'm meeting. It seems like almost, you know, a big percentage of women that I speak to, oh, I'm also certified in Reiki, or I'm also doing this, and so it's just spreading like wildfire, which is fantastic because we really do need it. In one of my books, I did the demographics from other studies and cultural studies, a culture of creatives and other studies, and I, I determined that there's probably 80 to 100 million of us on the planet. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people who came in with a purpose mm -hmm. that wants to turn the tide on the dark potentials and lead us into an enlightened future. And also one of the elements was that we would take on the patterns and karmas of these lineages and we would have to work through them. We'd have to heal ourselves out of it to show a new way for humanity. So it wasn't like we're going to all come in enlightened, which we really could have. Right. But we were going to have to um, have all those embedded programming in the unconscious, and we'd have to work our way out of it. But the difference with us, and that was very different from the more slowly evolving souls on the planet, is that we're so fiery, there's no way we were going to sit and just say, oh, well, I'm a jealous person, I'm an angry person, and not do anything about it. We were not comfortable with the shadow self and all these unconscious patterns. We were not comfortable with being limited in our self-expression, our creative expression, or in the level of abundance that maybe was getting limited by the programming. So we came in and we are just been in this amazing transfiguration and, I guess, ascension process, and, and I don't mean ascension of leaving the planet, but actually ascending into greater and greater aspects of who we truly are and moving beyond things that we really are not and that we've convinced ourselves somehow we were, but we're really so much more than that. 
And in all of us doing it together, it's, it's just been an amazing thing to witness how many programs, projects, incredible endeavors for positive planetary change are taking place today. We have new inventions and cures, and like you said, every modality you'd ever need mm -hmm. to heal your life. I mean, there's no excuse anymore. There's 10 healers on every block. I mean, there's clinics and healing centers and seminars. I mean, it's just... They're even, they've even added Reiki to hospitals. One of my friends is the head Christian chaplain at um, Cedar sinai in, here in Los Angeles, and they paid for her to go become a Reiki master so she can... Uh, to, uh, give Reiki to not only the staff uh, to keep them, you know, energized, which is great, uh, but patients as well. And and I know they've added Reiki to many hospitals, which is just fantastic. Yes, energy healing, sound healing, all uh, scien scientific uh, confirmations are taking place now for things that you know once were maybe woo woo, you know. But that woo woo word, thank God, is off the planet. Yeah. <laughs> really using that anymore. It was a little bit hard emerging as a mystic into this world and going, oh my God, that's what I am. And when I grow up, this is a calling, a, you know, and a healing sacred priestess. I mean, these things uh, were not a known thing and people have a lot of mythology around what that would mean. But now so many of us are interested in actualizing our greater potential, bringing out our divine qualities, and these include healing and inner sight and yeah. really amazing abilities. This is fantastic. Now, how do you were talking about how you can unravel some of the programming, because we're all programmed. We come in and then we're programmed into society, and uh, so what? what's, this? I mean, some people, I guess it's worse, <laughs> or they're not as open to letting things go. Um, what What's your technique for that, or, or if you could just talk about it a little bit? Well, early on, I had a lot of really challenging things, and so, of course, that activated aspects in me I was not comfortable with, and anger, and and also uh, hitting up against limitations, belief systems, self-image, and all that, and, and I think one of the greatest catalysts that was so horrific that I can only be grateful for was my mother became severely mentally ill when I was 19 and I was the one out of the family that took her in wing and walked with her the next 36 years mm -hmm. and I I had so much trigger to me I was witnessing so much and it really put me on a quest to find out what is at the heart of suffering and is there a cure and I, as I delved more and more deeply into this, and then also had to deal with repercussions of things in my own life, relationship dynamics and all kinds of things that would play out, it, it drove me down deep into the psyche. And so I, I was able to find that all of the ills of humanity are coming out of our psyche or the subconscious, unconscious. Mm -hmm. It's all from our beliefs that form programs that then play out in the screen of life. And so Earth is like a holographic field that is playing out these movies and where they are challenging or we have illnesses or we're dealing with relationship or financial issues, it really is calling us within to find the parts of us that are programmed that way. Like I'm not deserving and I uh, I don't matter and so I, of course I can't have abundance or, you know, I'm bad and I... I deserve to be beaten because I was a little child that was beaten, maybe, you know, for those people. And and so they keep getting abused as they go. So I found not only what was at the cause of all these problems, but how to undo it. And that led me in the field of psychology, and I ended up getting a bachelor's, master's, and PhD in psychology. And, and as I was going through that process, I realized an inner a transformational healing I was doing on myself and helping others was really a counseling theory and practice just like the Stout NLP. There's what I call the Ferrari model of psychological healing and so I was not only able to uh, release people from what I would call life sentences of suffering that would have just gone on and on given their programming and and most everyone on the planet living the fate dictated by this human conditioning rather than uh, the, the authentic self manifesting its divine perfection in our lives. And so over a lot of years I had a, the most impossible cases find me, I was undoing it all for them as a 
you know, like a Houdini. And then I realized, well, they needed support on all levels. So my black belt in holistic healing and, and really advanced um, alternative medicine modalities that I had gotten before the psychology programs uh, really held me in good stead. And so I went to create optimal health lifestyle programs, total life transformation programs. And so I would help them on every level to actualize their greater potential and step free from these things that, you know, we once thought were impossible. Well, and, it's, it's, and such, not, <laughs> it's so needed. I have a great example of, of a programming that, that keeps someone in a financial um, disaster. For example, I knew a, a woman who uh, was uh, a waitress and she kept herself in credit card debt. She was always buying things that she didn't need, like Christmas ornaments, like she'd have, you know, hundreds, and she, they couldn't even fit on the tree, but the very expensive ones, or, oh, I just spent 5000 So she'd keep herself in credit card debt to, like, seventy, eighty thousand, 80000 and so that she had to keep picking up shifts, uh, anybody's shift, she'd be extra <laughs> shifts. So she was waiting on tables night and day, night and day, to pay the bills because she was responsible in paying the bills. She didn't declare bankruptcy. And uh, through some psychological, you know, uh, she went to a therapist or something, she'd realized her self-esteem or something, she didn't feel she deserved to be out of debt or to be abundant. So she it was like a punishment of working herself to the bone to pay, keep paying off these bills that she would create. And I think that's a perfect uh, example. And so who knows where that came from, right? Probably childhood or past life, and we need to unravel yeah. this. Yeah. Ancestral. And that's the thing. I mean, if anybody out there listening is has any adverse condition whatsoever, it's great to take action steps for remedies, mm -hmm. but until we really unlock it within and heal those aspects inside of us, those younger parts of us that are holding that program and kind of dictating that reality, you, we can do 10 million affirmations and nothing's really going to change. We can get out of debt only to get back into debt. Yes. Or we yes. can get out of the abusive relationship only to draw in the next one. And until we undo that programming, that will be our fate. But now, uh, for the first time in millennium, we're able to really free ourselves from these things and have a more glorious life, have an amazing, incredible, magical life that was meant for us and I think we'll always need to be doing our next pieces you know and, and keep clearing the way for that greater and greater realization of who we are and also the life we're meant to live. Well another programming that is just awful that you're gonna you can speak to because you can you help people with too is the is the self-image the how people should look in our society and I just and especially as a matchmaker I have my we've spoken my guys can be a little high maintenance and they want the best looking woman, the hottest woman, the thinnest woman and all of this. So it's all outer and then our advertising and billboards and how we should look in the diet industry and and what, you know, who's Kim Kardashian, her butt's like this, so now you have to have that butt or the lips or this. And it's like no one is just comfortable being their authentic selves and being their best version. It's like they're a, a, a hack version of someone else. And it's painful. It's very painful. Um, but you've developed, not only you can unravel, but you've developed something where you, because look how gorgeous, I'm, we're not going to say your age, but uh, <laughs> ageless. it's over 29 <laughs> and you are ageless. I mean, just gorgeous with abundant health and beauty and energy. And so tell us what you do for women to kind of even back up the aging process. Yeah. Well, a lot of things became a byproduct of me just wrestling with my own shadow aspects and trying to survive, you know, through it all. And one of the things that was just an amazing alchemical key I found is that when I masterfully did my self-healing process as the issue would come forward and I then find that unconscious aspect, heal it and raise it to its full potential, which means now I could graduate to the next potential. I found that I was shortening the time of misery, the adverse effects of those aspects, and that's what I put in my seven steps. Uh, the second step is really exploring what that, how that aspect is adversely affecting us, maybe making us tired and aged and burdened and overwhelmed or even physical conditions. As we heal them, we're freeing ourselves from that. So a byproduct became of taking off all the weights and the burden and the exhaustion and getting the cause and core and freeing myself was not only living in my what I call authentic self most of the time, which is our positive, 
proactive self that is really joyous and alive, passionate about life, fun, exciting, and, and excited about life, and also able to even see the beauty and drink it in and enjoy life, but also to undo this physical condition. So I've actually cured myself of two incurables, and I've had so much horrific things in my life I've had to clear out of my system and that I, I've been able to pave a way and showcase a way for people that no matter what we've ever gone through, that, that um, would age us, make us bent over and worn out and, and sad and whatever, uh, can, we can free ourselves. And I have. So most people, when they meet me, they don't even think I've gone through anything in life. I've just had a, you know, born with a golden platter of everything wonderful, and I just have a naturally youthful appearance and nothing. I mean, seriously? If I hadn't done all that inner work, I swear to God, I would be aged and bent over and probably ruined and wrecked and bitter and mm. all these things. And maybe on a ton of meds, everybody's living on meds when they finally get to certain ages and they've got all this. And for me, I just saw that year after year I was getting younger. And I can see some pictures from before, before I like, mastered this and was living my authentic self most of the time and had done all this clearing, looking older. Mm -hmm. And that I just keep getting more and more alive and passionate and youthful and happy and joyous. And it's an amazing way of life, you know? It's a miraculous way of life. And so consequently, I have had... People come into my, um, men come into my life, especially in the last 12 years, that have just been younger. Mm -hmm. And I, that's who I resonate with. That, you know, some, I mentioned you before, sometimes when I go out with maybe men in the 50s, um, sometimes I'll feel like my father. They're already so old already. You know what I mean? One time a guy was... Um, four years older than me at the time, and I felt like I was out to dinner with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And it's because I, one of the byproducts of doing this inner work is I became my eternally youthful self. And that's when I realized I wasn't in an age. That's when I started forgetting what age I am. And that's why I try to have people not tell me how old I am, because I don't want to live in that reality. I yeah, want to it's, it's speaking it's, of that, you know, it's when sometimes I'll see I'll see a picture or some guy, some man, and I'm like, he's my age, and I'm shocked because he looks like a grandfather, you know, like maybe not healthy. You can tell maybe overweight and all gray or bald and gray, just like polo skin, you know, and I'm just like, oh, you know, that's how old I am, and and it's just a shock uh, yes. because I do feel also youthful and 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 vibrant and everything for, for my age over 50 but uh, yeah it can be quite a, quite a you know you are over 50 yes yeah oh my god day. well we are paving the way girlfriend <laughs> and we are a testimony that this is how life can be and we don't have to do 10 million you know treatments I mean I love treatments of course spa treatments and yeah, yeah. yeah do all you can to enhance your vitality and and you know, for your skin and all that. I totally believe in that. Mm -hmm. However, you know, you exude an amazing youthfulness too and playfulness. And that's yeah, why it's I'm excited. Just, I'm, you know, when people will say, so they'll come to me and, and want to be a part of my service and say, well, I'm 40, but I don't act 40. Or I, and I'm like, what does that mean? You don't act, well, you suddenly turn an age and you act different or you're like, <laughs> you know, like talk like an old person or what, what I don't even understand it. But I guess I just... I've just gotten a little smarter as the years have gone by, but otherwise I think I'm pretty much the same. My husband's like, he's like, you're like a kid. You never grew up. I want to go on water slides, you know, water parks, picking up pine cones outside. I'm bringing home stuff. I'm, you know, running, rolling around on the floor with kids and animals. And, you know, I just, he's like, you don't grow up. I'm like, well, I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah, because that youthful side of us. And so I really like it because I've gained a lot of wisdom as I've gone along and a lot of mastery and skill and skill in conscious relationship and all kinds of things. At the same time, I just am playing. I just love, I love to play and have fun. And now, guess what we've got? They're selling like crazy adult coloring books. Have you oh my guys gosh. seen this? 
And, and I even bought one, but I don't have any. I've got to buy some crayons. But I, I, it was so funny. Before these were even popular, I used to think, you know, I really used to love to color. But I thought that would just be too ridiculous, like really, like you're a kid. But now they're, everybody's doing it. Louise Hay has, from Hay House has coloring books out, and they're all over the place. So, you know, we, we, I think people are looking for that. Everything's so heavy in life now on the news and what's going on, and, and we yeah. want to add that playful aspect to our lives so yeah. well, the secret I found is that our inner self is eternally youthful very vivacious very fun and magical very wise very skilled very knowledgeable has inner sight and it so we don't have to climb a mountain to become these things it's really right there within us it just needs to be unlocked we need to be able to unlock that part of us and live in that reality and it's really our true reality you know we might be a million years old we don't know how old our souls are you know so why get locked into earth time oh my god 60 or oh my god you know yeah. 70 yeah. 80 90 I'm sure everyone's seen these 90 year olds running around youthful like kids right and, while other ones are hunched over in and have a walker or bedridden and so it really is has to do with the inner world and all of the things that we go through accumulate. And if we don't resolve those issues, if we're carrying the pain of the past, if we're still indulging in it and, and we're letting our shoulders you know, sag and we're feeling overcome and overwhelmed and we don't get inside there and clean it up, it will take over and etch itself on our physical bodies and we will look like everything we've been through. And at times I have, you know, at times I've looked at the mirror going, oh, oh my God, okay. And I, you know, undo it. It's like, no, I don't know, some reason I have a no. And I, I just think even if I live 120 years, I am going to be like this. Because I, I, like you, I've never changed. I yeah. mean, I've just grown wiser. And, I have, you know, I see some changes on the body, but, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's, uh, you know, you're going to get some wrinkles and my arms aren't as smooth, the skin. and But... You guys, one perk is <laughs> when menopause comes, don't you don't have to go out and get a boob job. You don't have to pay ten thousand dollars for plastic surgery. I've gone from an A cup to a D naturally. <laughs> it just I guess the hormones, things are placed a little differently, and my husband is thrilled. So that's a little perk there. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I have friends too. They're like my bras don't fit. I'm a D cup now, and 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 they're still slender. So it's like, well, this is, you know, at least we get something for the, you know, bang for our aging. <laughs> I, once I went and saw a Chinese doctor and, and I was sitting there and he was doing some analysis and everything. And he said, I loved how he said it. He says to me, so you've been on the planet 40 years. And instead of saying, so you, how, you're 40, you know, you've been on the planet 40 years. So it's kind of like, well, that's how long I've been on this incarnation. And kind of was like, yeah, isn't that cool? I've been on the planet 40 years. <laughs> That is a good way to look at it. Yeah. And I think, you know, even as annoying as it is to see movie stars because they can afford every great treatment looking, you know, 20 when they're 50s, um, still it is inspiring to know that we have a lot at our fingertips today to help us stay youthful. We have the most amazing products, inner products, the supplements, and the great green, you know, green powder and the maca and we do our power smoothies. There's a lot there to support us in living really vital lives and looking our best. And, and I think, that, and you just hit it because it's from the inside. When when women, as a matchmaker, and I live in Los Angeles, I can tell you when women go and get their face all done, you know, the lips blocked, the fake lips, the fake hair, the fake nails, the fake boobs, the fake, you know, pulled, the, the, it looks like a, a, a freak. It's freaky looking and it doesn't make anyone look younger. It just draws attention to someone that, oh, she's older but trying to look younger so she messed up her face. It does not, I don't you agree, it doesn't make anyone look younger. So yeah, I think it's yeah. maybe a little Botox or some mm -hmm, freshening, mm -hmm. freshening, but very little. And yeah. then just keep yourself teeth whitened, hair colored, you know, fresh. Mm -hmm. slim, vibrant, putting good things inside you. I think that's the best way to age gracefully because we all, that's, time marches on and, and we're human. So, of course, you know, we're not going to look 20 forever, but we can still look look vibrant and fresh, I think, as we go. Yeah, and there's a lot more and more less invasive procedures yeah. that we can avail ourselves at that freshen our face, that purify the skin, that, you know, gives us 
a more of a lift and it's not a big um, thing where yeah those contorted faces <laughs> like <laughs> It's pretty scary, and some people have died on the yes. on the table. I think it is, action. and and I'm often wonder what happens to those women. I mean, a lot of them are very wealthy movie stars, mm -hmm. and are they looking in the mirror? Can they see it, or do they not see it? I mean, it's a phenomenon I don't understand at this point. Yeah, yeah. However, yes, how sad, you know, and and yet it's is coming from a good place that. Mm -hmm. We're eternally mortal spirits. We're ever youthful internally. So it is hard to just start wrinkling up. And, and so, you know, I understand completely why someone would want to try anything. But, yeah, be careful. Be careful. And, to and not do go a lot overboard. of the inner. Do a yeah. lot of the, you know, great supplements. And, 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 you know, I do hot yoga every morning. And I like to get out for hikes and bicycling. And, you know, just keep ourselves, if we keep ourselves healthy on all levels and then healthy mind really is the key because you can have gorgeous beauty and a, just a very low energy and a pouty face and, you know, so it is really that inner, our inner world too. I know a lot of women friends who are in their 50s and 60s doing that aerial yoga now that, you know, hanging on the scarves and swinging and it's just, you know, trapeze, uh, all of that kind of stuff, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, there's so much to do, so get out there and do it, you guys. And you guys, let us know what you do to keep young. Put your comments below. And uh, all of Aurora's links are in the box if you're watching this on YouTube. And thank you so much for coming by and, and sharing your story and what you do. And aloha, namaste. Aloha, blessings to everybody, and thank you so much.